Welcome to the Functional Health Coaching Show, where we are here to support and answer your questions so that you can help people on a deeper level get real results and grow your health coaching business. Do you have questions you want to ask live on the show? You can call in every Friday at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 1-347-637-1378. Are you looking to increase your credibility and grow your health coaching business using functional lab testing and data-driven protocols so that you can confidently solve health issues? Well, we have the course for you. Go to fdn.today slash show to learn more and sign up today. Okay, let's join today's episode. You've tuned into the FDN Fantastic Friday Call or the Functional Health Coaching Show. We've got a couple titles that we use around here for our weekly check-in with you guys for the podcast, right? Uh, It is January 31st, 2020, so January is just about done here for the year. So hopefully the year started off really good for you. Uh, I'm your host, Brandon Molay, and I've got my co-host again with me here today, Brendan Vermeyer, and we're here to help support you, answer your questions when it comes to functional diagnostic nutrition. No matter where you are in this process, if you are a trainee working through the course, if you've already graduated and you have some case management questions or business questions, anything that you want to bring up, we're happy to answer them. Um, Or if you're checking out FDN, you've been looking at it for years or just got onto it, maybe you get more of a feel of of what we do and what our organization is about and how we can help you, you know, whatever level that you're at. If you're building a business, if you want to help family and friends, Whatever it sounds like to you, we're, again, happy to check in. We do this about just about every week. We've been doing it for about 10 years now, and uh, glad to carry on the tradition that, that Reed started, our founder, and uh, just, again, come to you guys each week and, and connect, give you a few announcements, let you know what's going on in FDN land, and then time to time we'll have a, a, a guest on. We might do an interview, but we do a whole lot of Q&A here, so we love questions, and they can be about any aspect of of what we do, and usually we have some kind of answer to pull from, either from training or especially at this point from me doing FTN for 10 years and Brendan getting up there too. Uh, we've got some experience we want to want to share with you guys. So thanks for tuning in. Again, um, it's a live caller show, so we like live, live callers better than written in questions. We'll do written in questions, but live callers are always going to take precedent. So that number to call in, if you're not already on the switchboard, is 347 347- Six three seven one three seven eight. Again, that's three four seven six three seven one three seven eight. And like always, just hit one on your keypad. That'll notify me that you want to come on. I'll ask your area code and get your name, and then you can ask a question or two, depending on how many people are in line, and we'll help you out. So happy to be here, guys. It's it's uh, kind of cold and cloudy and. Uh, a little bit yucky here in Kentucky um, today, but you know it's only for a few more months, and then it'll get sunny again. I was I was chatting with Brendan before the call, and uh, I, I sent him a p- picture of, of me and my my infrared sauna um, from the other night, and I said, "Oh, this is <laughs> this is what I need right now. I need some sauna time." And I was actually listening to um, his oat uh, course, uh, kind of trying to find the time to move through that. Either try to take that time uh, during the week to do some studying, or Odd, odd times like that where I'm just chilling in the sauna at 8:30 at night and <laughs> trying to uh, further my education and learn what I can from from this guy. So, um, but yeah, so maybe where you are, it's warm. If not, maybe you're just in a warm house and doing good. So, we wish you all the best. Hope things are well, and uh, I'll check in with Brendan here. So I've been talking about him, man. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? I'm literally responding to your text right now saying this is okay. such a ballistic savage gangster text that I got. <laughs> um, exactly. This picture of you, I, I might have to like blackmail you with it on Facebook one of these days, but um, <laughs> Fine. yeah, you know, sauna being so important, but yeah, glad you were getting a little sweat, a little infrared uh, therapy while doing some gluten-free or uh, oat study there. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, life is good. A lot of good things going on at FDN. So just a quick recap for you guys, for those of you that didn't see the AFDNP weekly update, or for those of you that are not yet in the AFDNP, um, we had our weekly update show, but we recapped a little bit. We had Kendra Perry, former AFDNP director, um, or gosh, I guess we're creeping up on two years already that I've been in this position. So that's kind of crazy, but 
Um, Kendra was on talking about her HTMA. It was really fun because that was the third time that I've hosted her for her HTMA course, but this one was more of a uh, interview organic conversation. And it was a really, uh, really cool conversation, very educational. And obviously, you know, a lot of information about her HTMA course. Um, she's teaching it live. It, uh, enrollment closes on the 7th and um, the program starts on the 10th of February. Uh, and I know there was that discount code that was all in the, the webinar. So you can see that or, you know, the information shouldn't be hard to find. I just I think it was like FDN rocks or something like that as the discount code. But either way, it's out there. Just give her a little little plug here for you guys, because uh, I know a lot of uh, a lot of FDNs have done her course. I bought it, but I haven't done it yet, and I think I might have missed out on that. That's that's a bummer. But I uh, I actually am due for my HCMA retest, and I'm going to have my homie here, Brandon, uh, interpret it through the medical director program. So, you know, that's the beauty of our power uh, of community, right? Where we've got all the clinical advisors through the medical director program. We've got our peer mentors uh, in the Facebook group. So, you know, the power is in our numbers. We all put our heads together uh, to help one another and help all of our clients. And that's what makes FDN so unique. So, yeah, I don't know that I have any crazy updates, but a little good way to kickstart the show, I suppose. I think so, definitely. So, yeah, I, you know, obviously, this, I'm in love with HTMA and have incorporated that into, into what I do for a few years now. It really does add some insight. And, you know, the foundational labs are amazing, and I work for years uh, with those only, and they do an amazing job of getting down to root causes, right, or as much as we can, those root causes. The addition of the HTMA was something that I didn't see coming, and then as it worked itself into what I do, it's another lab that I run as far as my basic intake uh, with the person. I feel like it gave me information I needed, and really I think where I felt like it fit real nicely is sort of the detoxification uh, piece of it. Uh, more than what we do with just the basic dress and working through the labs that we run, it's a next level detoxification uh, for me. It sort of fit that piece of the puzzle. I feel like I didn't um, – I wasn't. I didn't feel comfortable dressing completely, so that's where it fits for me in the process. And there, it's a relatively inexpensive lab to run as well um, compared to other ones with lots of information. So, everybody's looking for new things to study and do, even though you want to stick to the foundational things and, and probably work more on building your business um, than you want to do on on tons of extra, extra education. But I think maybe I'd, I'd say HTMA OAT is definitely two labs that you want to look into uh, if you want to study next level, probably functional blood chemistry is sort of, and those are functional blood chemistry is mixed in with those two a little bit too. So that's sort of the areas that I gravitate to if I need something a little bit more or if the information comes to me, I'd like to be able to be, to, to utilize it. You know, many people come with blood, with blood results and I want to know, okay, well, I can't just look at it and say, well, nothing here for me to to help you with, I like to have something that I can sort of glean from that. So if you're looking for additional things to study, to use, that will be very practical, super useful. That's the areas I gravitate towards. But, of course, all our advanced modules are tremendous, and the training on AFMP is, is top-notch. So delve in. Keep that balance, though, between building your business, growing yourself as a practitioner, and also on the studying, on the, on the lab testing side of things, and seeing what's out there. So... Definitely check it out. Kendra's awesome. So um, let's see. That's good stuff. And then I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and mention this too. You know, dates are set for the FTN Rock Conference, or I guess FTN Conference. I'm not sure if it's going to be Rock again, but FTN Conference there in October. So we'll go ahead and start reminding people of that. Um, I don't know if that super crazy awesome early board pricing is, is over with yet, but check out the information on that. We're going to do it uh, again this year, come together several hundred FDNs and amazing speakers um, come together and we have a great time for three or four days and we just learn and connect and it's an amazing time. Um, it's, it's hard to replicate that over technology, over the internet, through video, Zoom, whatever. It's really hard to do that. And so coming together like that in a place like that where you can hang out, chill, eat, drink together, have a good time, um, nothing quite like it. And then, you know, you're going to see a lot of people that are flying in from all over the world to come and be at that event that weekend. So it's a game-changing event. So it's something that you hadn't planned for. Look into the details, um, get connected, and, and come. It's it's going to be a 
huge, huge boost to your business and to what you're doing um, on every single level. So check it out. Um, information's there on the website. And uh, keep it in mind, and hopefully we'll, we'll see you there. Um, all right, so question-wise, I've got a few hands raised here already, which is great. We'll bring you on in just a second. Um, I do want to congratulate some graduates this week. Um, this is one of the best best parts of the show, and we want to – typically every single week we have somebody to say congratulations to. So we're proud of you guys and uh, want to shout it out there to to the world that what you've done, what you have accomplished with coming through the course. And, again, I get to do – all the verbal finals, so the one of the last steps there of graduation, um, I get to be part of that, and it's really an honor to do that because I get to know you guys a little bit, your stories, uh, where you've come from, sort of where you're going, um, what you've already accomplished, accomplished, and what you're going to do in the future with it. So that's a fun part to me. Yeah, we've got to do the examination, make sure you know what you're talking about. Typically, the other mentors ahead of me have have made sure of that, but um, so I do get to enjoy. Um, Saying congratulations, but also getting to know people a little bit, and uh, and they become part of our tribe, our community that just builds and makes it better and better. And it's it's a good time to be an FDM practitioner. So we're going to say congratulations to these three people from this week. I've got uh, Tiffany Sterner from North Carolina and also Hawaii, from time to time, um, and then uh, Taraya Spriggs from Florida, and then across the pond there in the UK, Claude Sargent. Uh, Czech practitioner, um, now FDM practitioner as well. So, guys, congratulations to you. Great work. (laughs) Awesome stuff. Keep working through, and I'll get to read your name off on a call really soon. All right. Well, I guess we want to move into questions now. So I've got some hands raised, and we can go there. I think that's all we have to talk about. So let's grab the first one here. I've got area code... Five one zero. So five ten. What's your name there? It's Joe Phillips, guys. Hey Joe. What's going on, Joe? Um, I'm just checking back in. I'm curious to see if our recordings are done from the last rock rock um, mm. conference. They sure are. Because I've ordered them, but I don't think I saw an email. I, you know. So is yeah, that they. Um, oh, go ahead. Um, they, they, uh, the recordings are available. Um, they sent out the announcement email for that about a week, week and a half or so ago. Um, I have seen a lot of questions kind of popping up through the various channels of how to access or any issues, but they are available. The email did go out to everybody that bought it with, you know, the instructions to access. Um, I remember seeing it myself. I have not yet, you know, accessed mine, but I saw the email. So be sure to check spam or junk. But if, if you, you know, after digging around still can't find it and you know, you bought the recordings, uh, send an email to probably support at AFDNP would probably be the best email to reach out to. Awesome. Cause I'm looking forward to it. Okay. That was it from now. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah. Good. Enjoy those. Glad you brought that up. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Hey, you too. Thank you. You too. Joe is a longtime listener and frequent caller, so always enjoys questions. But yeah, so if you if you can't make it, um, I guess the next best thing is to get the recordings from us. So audio and video recordings. There, are lots of good information from last year. So you can still purchase those. As far as I'm, as I know, you can still purchase those if you didn't make it. Um, it was a good mix, and usually we try to do this a good mix of of the business side of things and mindset side, uh, but also the science side. So you're getting to hear some things. We're relatively new, some cutting edge things. That's you know, you hear about things like what's going on, new stuff, science breakthroughs and where things are going, usually at conferences, right, before it gets and becomes really mainstream. Um so we were hearing some really cool stuff and uh some of the you know, best names in our industry uh were there and got to speak with us and and connect. So next best thing, yeah, it's to get <laughs> to get the recordings and check those out. I'm st- I'm still working through those. I had several that I wanted to go back and listen to again. All right. Good stuff. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, all right. Well, no hands raised, but, boy, a ton of you guys out there. So if you get if you get brave and want to jump on, ask a question, anything. It can be a business-related thing. Um, it can be a testing type of thing, case management. Um, we're happy to chime in. So just hit one on that keypad and come right on. We'll jump to a question here first. Let me see if I can find a good one here on the list. Well, here's just a 
maybe one that we'll talk about just as far as working through the course if you're a trainee and sort of tips on how to how to make it through most efficiently. Um, so this person was talking about that they're reading some comments uh, about starting the written exam as early as possible. Uh, where do I find it to download it? I don't see it uh, anywhere. So um, I guess first of all with that, yes, um, written final there that we it's part of the graduation process. So we 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 examine examine you from several different angles if you want to look at it that way. Um, not only the functional uh, and practical side of things. So actually going through and 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 doing an R and R with a with a mock client, um, verbal things. We ask you to to exemplify your ability to do FDN verbally, but also you know with the written word. So we have a, a very extensive written exam that you'll take. So that covers a whole lot of other ground too. And most people get to it and they say, wow, it's a lot of information. But by the time you get completed, you look back and say, wow, that really did help, again, solidify things and go back and recap some of those things. So by the time you graduate the course, you know your stuff. Those principles are are deeply embedded um, in you between having to to actually teach it as far as doing an R&R, write it, um, you're going to be listening to it. So all the different ways that we really can get something into us, we're using all those, all those with the course. So it's all reinforced different ways. Some people, you'll learn a little different than others. So part of that. So that written final is very comprehensive. So it's not something you'll be able to sit down and do in a couple hours. It's going to be a little bit more involved in that. So we do recommend, yeah, that you, as soon as you see it there, um, and it's there on the tabs, you'll see it on the side there, um, download it as soon as it becomes available to you as you work your way through the course there. And it's a good idea to start working on that. Um, you'll probably go back through it at the end and, and, and refine it a little bit as you continue to learn and uh, things get more solidified in your mind. So go back through that. Um, tweak it, make it just what you want it to be. You're going to submit that uh, after you've completed all your practicals, uh, and then you get into the, the final examination process um, after doing that. So, yeah, start on it early. Um, that's always a good piece of advice, and um, you'll see it there in the tabs there under the verbal final. There's a couple of different places you can, can download it there. Let's see. Any hands raised? No. Let's go on to the next question. That's yeah, another lab one. Okay. Uh, I want to do my first set of labs on myself, but don't want to give up caffeine for a day help <laughs> and any hacks for that uh so that's a good question i just had this uh, conversation with a, a personal client uh my actually a couple one going kind of going through uh the lab testing process um what you want to do in all the different labs there's certain things that the lab asks us to do to try to get um the most i wouldn't say accurate results but i think the most helpful because uh, the labs are accurate so if you you know drink a bunch of coffee uh and then you take your saliva sample 20 minutes later uh, on your on your 205, um, you're going to see probably increased cortisol because coffee can increase cortisol. The caffeine there can. So the lab result is accurate because it's measuring the amount of cortisol in the saliva sample that's there. Um, but is it as helpful? That's the question there. So that's the, maybe the bigger aspect of this is you're trying to get as much as you can true state of affairs of the body where it where it is without maybe any extra support. Now, in many cases, you have people that are on, you know, medications um, or um, something that's an outside influence maybe they cannot get off of. You have to in interpret the lab through the lens of whatever that they're taking that's influencing it that way. But the situation where you can not take something uh, easily or case of caffeine, avoid caffeine for that time period there, it's probably going to give you a better insight and probably some insight into your body. So if you can't go a day without caffeine, that's probably an indication that your uh, body's not really making the energy and, and doing really what it should if you have require caffeine to make it. It's a good indication that we need to do some things to help your body to make energy more naturally. So, um, so with the caffeine side of things, I think it's one of those things where it's good to tough it out. Um, I would say probably drink maybe extra water as long as you don't drink too much water based on the different labs and what you want to do. Um, you, on some of them, they say you can uh, take the sample and then have some coffee. And then because you've got several hours before the next sample, hopefully that ca caffeine has, has gotten out of your system. It's not having an effect anymore. Um, it's still something where I think it's a good idea. And especially if you're thinking about trying to get off of caffeine, that's one of your maybe big goals there. You have to start somewhere. So maybe that is the catalyst and the push you need to come off of, of caffeine finally and see how you truly feel uh, without that extra support there. 
Um, so wise to do. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of some hacks. Do you know anything, Brendan, that you might, or what do you suggest to your folks when they come to, to coming off caffeine or just at least for testing one day? Um, yeah, I mean, on the one hand, you know, skipping caffeine or cutting it really shouldn't be anything too daunting. And, you know, there's probably something to be, be said for, you know, doing what you got to do, so to speak. Um, now, certainly a lot of times people don't want to interrupt their day-to-day flow too much for the sake of testing. And, and, you know, certainly like for me, every time I do like my organic acid test or, or whatever, I don't stop doing it. I, I don't do anything different leading up to the test because, you know, I want to see the results reflecting what my normal is and what I've been doing leading up to the test. So definitely there are some, um, you know, there are absolutely some instructions that you have to follow, you know, per the lab's instructions included in the kit. Like even with the O test, there are some food restrictions that if you don't, um, you know, pay heed to those, they they can alter your test results uh, in sort of an unconstructed way, just as, you know, you wouldn't want to drink that caffeine the morning of a, a, a saliva sample, right? Um, but, you know, again, this is where we kind of have to be just critical with our thinking uh, of, you know, any lab test, no matter what it is, it's a very imperfect snapshot of a moment in time. And we put it into context because it's very easy to kind of get in this like, um, you know, mode of like, oh, I'm just going to run the test and, and trust the results. And, and it's like, no, I mean, really to make the most out of lab testing, we have to understand the technology, the limitations of that technology, understand uh, what we're measuring, what we're not measuring, and kind of have that physiological understanding of how do we actually get these results and and then put it into the context of the situation, right? You know, it's like if you do a mycotoxin test on somebody that's living in a moldy apartment, uh, you know, you have to put it into context of the situation. So that's where there are times where, you know, you have clients on multiple medications and it's like, well, you can't, you, you shouldn't, and you can't ask them to not take their medication as prescribed just to collect a urine sample or stool sample for you. Um, but we just have to take good case notes and put it into context um, while obviously doing the best we can to follow the very specific instructions from the lab and so on and so forth. So I think some of this is the rationale that we have to be uh, considering when we're, we're, in, we're doing any kind of testing. True. It's always the interpretation side. Uh, through that lens, and that's where you can't just take a lab by itself with absolutely no context who this person is, and expect to really do the uh, uh, get a proper feel for it and have a proper interpretation, and then have the best recommendations. Um, Reed's mentioned this many times um, uh, doing biohealth consults, so um, doing part-time uh, consulting for biohealth, a lot like a medical director um, call or clinical advisor call would be. Um, Somebody, and it could be you know, an FDN that wants interpretation on uh, 205 or a biohealth lab, we'll say 205, for example. Um, of course, a lot of other uh, practitioners use biohealth, right? So uh, Reed has doctors that, that call in that have maybe run this for the first or second time, and they call in, and what they want is, hey, tell me what to give this person. That's their question. Here's a lab result. What do I give this person? That's the mentality, and Reed will kind of back them up and say, okay, well, that's, you want to think about it a little different way. We need some background, some context. Um, you know, we need to interpret this thing properly within the context of whose test results are these. Right? Always come back to whose test results um, are we looking at. And then you can more accurately recommend or make good recommendations based on that. So um, even with medical director consulting um, or um, uh, the uh, AFTMP um, case reviews that we do, um, we always ask for case notes and for context. Who is this person? Um, that's always key. If you're if you're not doing that, then um, boy, it's really a detriment to the person you're working with. I think it's a uh, it's a halfway job, maybe put it that way. Um, and it's not complete. It's not serving them the best. And I think if you once you know that that's how it should be done, I think it's going to bug you to not work that way. It does with me sometimes with the clinical advisor session. 
maybe they just get, I just get lab results. I don't get any contacts. Well, the first question I'm going to ask that FTM practitioner, well, after say, after reprimanding them for not giving me case notes, I'll say, hey, who is this person? Tell me the main complaints, age, a little bit of their history. What have you done so far with them? Let me know who this person is. And then, okay, that illuminates the lab results. That's probably a good word to use, illuminating the lab results. So it's going to be a little in the shadows, a little bit dark. Maybe you don't understand where this fits in. Once you have that information, it's like a light shining on those lab results, and boom, you've got obvious interpretation coming through, lots of clinical correlation, and then up from that are obvious to me dress recommendations. Where do you go? What do you need to work on first? That's sort of the process. It's a fun process. It's, my mind's gone through that process thousands of times at this point. It's sort of just ingrained. And it will be for you, too. The more that you do that as you're in the training as a practitioner, it's just how we think. And then uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets and more fun it gets, too. So, yeah, I'm not sure. What was the question I asked? Where did we get that? Oh, yeah, giving up caffeine for that. I guess we're talking about, I guess, the bigger picture here is interpreting um, labs properly. So I think that principle connects with that question. So hopefully that helped you out there, whoever wrote that in. Appreciate that. Um, and then, hey, all right, we've got several callers. How awesome. So let's grab the first one here. You've been on hold the longest, I think. I hope so. I'll try to pick you out here. So um, 919 area code there. 919. What's your name, hey, 919? Yeah. This is Hello. Kim from North Carolina. Hey, Kim. Hello, Kim. Hey there. I'm a trainee just starting out. And I recently heard that North Carolina may be a red state. How would I find out more information on restrictions or regulations as it relates to FDN and the business? Gotcha. Let me uh, let me jump on my little cheat sheet here. I'll tell you the map that you're referring to there. Yeah, nutritionadvocacy.org is the website there. Um, American Nutrition Association. So they have a that map there that. Um, has a general summary of state regulation of nutrition practice. That's the closest that I've seen as far as generally getting a feel for what's going on in your state. But even then, it's going to be really specific to what's what's what that state has to say. Um, like, for example, right now, yours is a green state. Um, North Carolina happens to be South Carolina, both there. So in that case, it's legal to perform all individualized nutrition counseling, um, in that in that state, um, so as far as the nutrition counseling goes, it seems like just a cursory glance here that's wide open. Now, that that's usually what people are referring to with that map. I, mean, I guess that's what you're referring to now. I on am, the next yeah. level of that, okay, yeah. So I would still check into with your local legislature and make sure that that is the case, depending on what your scope of practice is, what you're doing, maybe what else you happen to be, maybe besides just an FDM practitioner. Um, and then I guess the next level on that too, really, Kim, would be, you know, for all of us, unless you're a licensed practitioner, none of us are going to be playing doctor and using terminology right. and trying to act like we're not going to be. So that's that's probably more of the emphasis we'd say as far as terminology goes. Um, that's the biggest focus I try to be is, you know, stay in my lane, do what's, what's lawful, do what's right. Um, and again, I don't I don't feel like I have to have those the ability to prescribe or diagnose to help somebody out um, quite a bit. Uh, so, short answer, but is that helpful? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. All right. Any follow up to that? Nothing for me. Thank you. Okay. Cool. We'll keep cool. going with the training. I'm glad to have you in the course there. So, um, yeah. So nutrition. Advocacy is the website there you can go to and take a look there. And this seems to change, uh, you know, relatively often, right? So it's shifting and changing. So if it's maybe not good in your area uh, per se, um, it could shift and change based on things going on. That's where uh, Reed is very big about this, and you've probably seen him post often uh, about, you know, voting and being a voice and advocating for um, some of the freedoms that I think we should enjoy. You know, there's yeah, there's there's good parts about government regulation. Um, there are things that do keep us safe, but there are things that um, keep us away from things that actually would would make life better for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. it's always going to be a part of our culture. That's just sort of of, of how it is. And there's always creative ways and uh, smart ways to do that. We've got several resources there. Um, I know Lisa Fraley is very good. Um, check her out. She's been on the 
AFDMP pretty often. She's been on the uh, at the spoke at the conference last year. Um, she's got great stuff when it comes to the legal side of things. Um, I'm probably forgetting some people, Brendan, but there's definitely resources there, people you can check out that can uh, help you directly if you want to really get down into it and uh, you know feel good about what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, and actually on that note, I might make a comment real quick where, you know, uh, I think what you just said, Brandon, is is so important. And it really is kind of the, um, I don't know, it's, it's the line that we all have to walk. And uh, like literally, um, you know, I kind of, I like to be pretty just transparent, honest with you guys and kind of keep it real. You guys know how I am, but you know, even just let's say Friday, um, the other day on the Real Results show, um, you know, the the subject of the show with Linda was people with chronic conditions. Now, that title by itself is flirting with the edge of legal boundaries, right? You know, the whole thing that we all have to be look. If if you have a medical license of some kind, you know, that license gives you certain rights within your state of licensure, you know, and whether you're prescriptive rights or whatever. Um, and, and if you're not licensed, but you have some sort of certification, you, you kind of have your own unofficial scope of practice, if you will, but really scope of practice, even that phrase is really more kind of legally uh, associated with some sort of licensure. Now, <laughs> As Brandon is is very eloquently and appropriately pointing out, uh, yeah, you know, the law is the law. Our government, um, it's a big thing. It's there to serve us, protect us. Um, but yeah, you know, it definitely kind of confines us at times. And so at the end of the day, it's all about using proper terminology of what we do, what we don't do. And this is I mean, I can tell you guys, like, this is Reed's biggest thing that kind of keeps him up at night is making sure that all of us, every single one of us that calls ourselves an FDN professional, uh, we've got to walk that line and we've got to use appropriate language, right? Um, and that's where, you know, anybody that kind of follows me in my work, like, I'm all about using proper language to make sure it's very clear uh, what I do, what I don't do. We're here to educate, empower, guide, hold accountable, et cetera, et cetera. We're not here to diagnose, treat, uh, so on and so forth. So it's definitely kind of a, it literally is like learning a, a foreign language. You know, you have to learn how to adopt this new language where you're able to help people to the best of your abilities without giving off the wrong impression, without uh, overstepping boundaries. And this is something, I don't know, I wish I had some like recordings of some of my client sessions or, or even just some of the consultations I did this week so you can hear how I do it. I mean, one of the first things I do when I'm consulting with a potential new client, I just very directly let them know like, hey, look, I'm not a licensed medical provider. I don't pretend to be. I don't want to be. I'm here to educate you, empower you, so on and so forth. You know, I kind of give them my very, very direct scripts. I have them sign the waiver, the terms of agreement, all the things. Now I'm in Kansas, I'm in a red state. Um, but you know, honestly, I don't really pay attention to any of that stuff because I know as long as I'm, uh, practicing my morals and using safe language that is in alignment with my, uh, credentials and whatever, you know, you're going to be okay. And literally the guy that I was consulting with yesterday, He's a hundred thousand uh, dollars deep into his healing journey. Has seen a who's who list of functional medicine providers across the country for just about everything, uh, and yet nobody has even run any just like fundamental testing for his particular uh, situation. And so when I t gave him my little soapbox, he he was just like, "Look, man, I don't care what your credentials are. You've been through this." and you have the information that is scientifically validated, it makes sense. So like, dude, I, I totally get it. I don't care what your credentials are. I want to work with you. So that's where you just have to be brave, be confident, adopt the safe language, you know, and you'll, you'll be okay. But to finish my thought, and then I'll shut up, is um, this is something that we all have to take extremely important uh, seriously because all it takes is, is one kind of quote unquote rogue FDN 
that, you know, kind of gets caught, steps out of line, doesn't have the proper verbiage on their website or whatever it is. And then it's a reflection of the community in whole. And hey, you know, FDN, we're, we're a decent sized tribe, but we're not nearly big enough. Like if, if a government body really wanted to shut us down, they could. And we can't have that. That would, that would really suck for all of us. So this is something we all have to, uh, you know, abide by. And, and that's where if you ever have any questions or doubts, you know, please contact uh, FDN staff so we can best guide you. So that way we can all continue the mission of helping people get well and stay well naturally. Exactly right. Exactly. And it's nothing scary, but it is something to take no. serious. And the more that you do it, it just becomes the way that you do. I don't really have to think, boy, let's make sure I don't say something wrong in this conversation. It just becomes part of what you do. And it just naturally flows out. And I think people respect that transparency and honesty and directness. So, um, but yeah, good topic to think about. Some definitely one of those fundamental things that you want to have lined up as an FDM practitioner. So good question. All right. Well, 23 minutes left in the show. And wow, there's a whole bunch of people with hands raised. Let's see if we can get to these questions. Hope with mm-hmm. the media that we can. So we'll do our best. Uh, 978 area code. What's your name, 978? Hey, Brandon and Brendan. It's Donna. Donna Sack hey. from Massachusetts. Hey, Donna. How are Hello, you, Donna? Hello again. <laughs> I'm good. Yes. Excellent consult yesterday, by the way, Brandon. That was very, very good. Thank you. Um, yeah, we had yeah, a good time. Very helpful. Yeah. So I had a, I had a quick question. Uh, if I, if uh, someone is positive for H. pylori and one of the possibilities to treat um, that they self-treat would be the maturity, what if they have uh, their MRT shows that they have a reaction to T? In the MRT, there's two categories. They show T and they show rooibos T. Um, if you have a reaction to either one, is Matula T going to be an issue? Good question. Good question there. So, yeah, so T um, showing up on the MRT uh, is going to be more like your black T, white T, green T, sort of in that family. And then Rubos T there, um, different ways you can pronounce that's the way I say it. So that's a different tree. I think that's like a tree bark, and that's a good detoxification tea, cool stuff. The Matula tea itself, if you look at the ingredient list there, it's a bunch of different herbs that don't fall into either one of those categories. So short answer is that person should be fine. Um, I guess in the other aspect of this too, we've, we've mentioned before, sometimes the good outweighs the bad. So even if that person did have a an MRT sensitivity to, to something that was in that product, would clearing the H. pylori, working on all the benefits of, of balance within the, the gut microbiome, would that outweigh any sort of sensitivity there? You know, in a lot of cases, it probably would, and you ought to go ahead and go forward with that. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. You're welcome. So green light. Go ahead. Awesome. Thanks, Don, right. for the call. Yep. Thank you. All right. Now I've got uh, 352 area code. What's your name there, 352? Hi. Um, my name's April, and thank you so much for taking my call today. I really appreciate it. Um, hey, April. My You're question, welcome. Hey. Uh, my question is business-related, and um, I just wanted to know if Reed or FDN in general is uh, planning at all on looking at the uh, new accreditation for the National Board uh, for Health and Wellness Coaching. Uh, it looks like uh, there's an, um, basically a transition period where the requirements not only to be involved with it as a program, but also to actually sit for the board are going to be a little more lenient than they are going to be next year. And so uh, this could really lend to the legitimacy and credibility of FDN. Also, a huge plus uh, was that I saw that as of January 1st this year, there's now a CPT code, <coughs> excuse me, a CPT code that the AMA has introduced. And it's only level three right now, meaning it's for research and so forth. However, what it does is set up the ability for health and wellness coaches to get reimbursed by insurance within maybe the next couple of years when they switch that to a CPT one code. And so that obviously could expand our client base tremendously. Um, but, you know, overall, when I was looking at all of the different programs that 
are accredited with this right now. A bunch of FDN competitors, like competing programs are in there. A lot of functional and, and integrative uh, health and wellness programs are already accredited. So is this something FDN is looking at? Uh, and, you know, it's just obviously to stay relevant as well. And it's a huge selling point, I think, for the FDN program. I mean, obviously, besides everything else it has that other programs don't. But I think it would be a plus. Uh, do you know anything about that? Mm. Good stuff. Brendan, do you want to talk about the accreditation side? You might be more up on that than I am. Yes. Um, so the exact letters and details and associations are going to escape me here, but to provide a little more uh, rhetorical insight into what's going on behind the scenes. So obviously at this point in time, all FDNs, uh, graduated FDNs are qualified to um become a board-certified holistic health practitioner through the AADP, or American Association of Drugless Practitioners. So all of that's on FDN Connect. There's no, you know, you don't have to sit for any exam or anything like that. Our training already qualifies us. So literally, you just sign up and get your piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And I would heavily encourage everyone to take advantage of that, you know, for that extra piece of paper title, blah, blah, blah. Um, as mm -hmm. far as moving forward, the direction, I'm not familiar with that exact um, entity, and I can't quite recall the name of the entity that we're currently seeking accreditation from. But I know Reed is actually working on multiple other accreditations and kind of board certifications. I know one of them that we're moving in the direction towards is actually an international health coaching board certification. Um, again, I forget the name of it, but... Um, we are working on more as we continue to grow. And as far as that one, um, I would encourage you to uh, pass that along to me and then I can bring it back to Reed and, and, and everybody else behind the scenes to, you know, look into it and see if that's something that we want to pursue. So if you want to shoot that like info or whatever to AFDNP at AFDNP.com, I'd love to take a look and pass it along. Yeah, sure, because there's two right now that are eligible to use the CPT code, uh, and that's the National Board for Health and Wellness Coaching, which actually is administered by the National Board of Medical Examiners. So essentially, mm. it's the same board where, you know, they're taking testing for medical examinations. Now, obviously, this is a health and wellness coach uh, examination. They're just joining forces as all. Well. And so, um, but when you look at the list, of uh, programs that have become accredited and the ones that are in the process now. It's quite extensive. Um, and when I looked at the uh, credentials, you know, the credentialing program, it is, it's not expensive and it, it doesn't look hard for a program to get involved with it. And um, so anyway, yeah, like even, like even Chris Prasser's program and the uh, Institute for Functional Medicine Coaching Academy's program is in there, Dr. Sears, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I mean, you know, these are basically a lot of programs that I feel, you know, would kind of compete with FDN, although, you know, FDN is very different. But I think FDN wouldn't have a hard time getting credentials is, is basically what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. the, other, awesome. the other one is the... Um, National Commission for Health and uh, Education Credentialing. So those are the two that are eligible to use the CPT code. So obviously, just, you know, in the future, that could really help out if we're able just to take, uh, you know, for insurance reimbursement purposes and, and so forth. So anyway, yeah, I will uh, shoot you that information. Thank you very yeah, much for your awesome. time. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, April. Thanks. Thanks for looking out for us, too, and letting us know some things on, yeah. on the horizon. And ourselves <laughs> as well as, as coaches. But, you know, I mean, obviously, to stay relevant and even just relating back to the um, the last question about uh, different states and, you know, the, the regulations that are coming down, you know, this would add another layer of legitimacy if you are, you know, national Indeed. board certified. So then maybe you have less of a legal issue with people coming after you for whatever. Now, obviously, you still got to stay away from medical terminology and all of that, um, which, you know, I'm sure they teach you in this certification as well. Uh, but the certification itself, the testing, is not expensive. 
um, or, you know, minimally expensive. And all you really have to do is submit like 50 hours of coaching that you've done and then take the exam. And that's really it. So um, it's definitely, it would be a nice feather in the cap. So, all right. Thank you very much. Excellent. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks, April. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So I'll tag on one comment and then we'll go to the next caller here. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, the insurance CPT code side of, side of things, I'm not sure about uh, that, not doubting what she's, what April's saying there, but how to use that. But I guess the overarching thing is if we can do something like that or find a way to have some of what we do covered, quote, covered, yes, you're still paying for insurance, so you're still sort of paying. So it's sort of a you know conversation there about you're taking your own health into your own hands versus trying to use what the insurance might dictate to you. But um, anything I can do to lower the cost of lab testing uh, for a client, because, you know, we don't mark up lab tests and we don't make any money on the labs that we recommend. I just need the data from that lab. You're going to pay me for my services, my expertise, my analysis, my coaching time, all those things. That's where, that's the, that's where we make our profit. We don't make profit on labs. So um, anything that can push us in that direction, maybe things are finally starting to shift and change to where, um, you know, indirectly or directly, you're sort of not really paying for that using insurance for it. That's a cool thing. And that's really awesome. So hopefully that uh, does go in that direction. And uh, we aren't uh, hampered or our hands aren't tied through that process. So cool stuff. Thanks, April. All right, 810 area code. i will try to get you guys in here. 810, what's your name there, 810? Yes, hello, uh, Brandon and Brandon. This is Rainy from Michigan, and I just hello. wanted to share. Yes, hello, and I wanted to say hi to all the uh, my FDM friends out there. I wanted first just to very quickly um, share with uh, everyone about the M- uh, the MRT test, uh, what happened, um, just uh, to uh, make sure that when you send the you know the clients, they really don't know all the ins and outs, and you know it's good for us to do the uh, walk in the you know, the talk, so to speak. So when I did this test, I specifically told one of the centers in here in Michigan, and maybe this is just isolated case, but just be aware of it. So I specifically told them that I just needed to use their phlebotomy service, and um, they also were not so sure what to do uh, with the kit. So uh, it's a good idea to really um uh, when you send the client in there to make sure that um they really uh, know what the process is because first of all they were not able to take the kit and of course I was okay with that but second lo and behold after I paid for uh, the service then um we realized that our insurance was charged so just to be uh, aware that this might happen if we wanted to make sure that the pl- process of uh, you know sending the clients is more flawless just wanted to share with you. And maybe this is just one of the centers, as I said, maybe it's not in every area, but specifically for the place that I used, that's what happened. So I had to dig further and, you know, talk with them and to clarify that. So just wanted to make sure that people know that some glitches like this can happen. And, um, but it's a great test. So my question is, um, I have a quick question here about the uh, mineral testing. uh, And it was a great, um, a great, um, you know, um, conversation with uh, Kendra Perry. Uh, Obviously, we all learned a lot about the hair analysis. But um, um, I have a friend, again, I wanted to find out from the uh, experts here, but in your um, experience, what do you do with um, clients that ask you, well, how much of, say, calcium should I take? Or, or, you know, like, as far as like mineral and supplements are concerned and the interactions, what, um, what, uh, besides the hair analysis, is there anything else, as we learn all these tests, is there anything else that uh, you might do to make sure that we are not overloading them with, say, with calcium supplement or just to find that balance in their um, metabolic uh, profile. Is there anything else as far as minerals are concerned that you can recommend? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think HTMA, you know, is just the bee's knees when it comes to that. I think you get probably most of the information that you would need and have good results with that. I haven't had any problems myself and all the ones that I've done. Okay. Um, of course, we're going to sequence and titrate. You know, that's part of the process too. It's going to give you some good insight. Um, you know, mineral levels in the blood um, aren't as helpful. Um, I'm wondering okay. maybe, hmm, Brendan, how much, how much would you get from an oat panel? 
on minerals? Would you get much from that standpoint? Um, from a mineral standpoint, you don't really get any direct. Um, there's a lot of biochemistry um, behind the oat markers. And, you know, if you're really, really biochemically sharp, you might be able to extrapolate certain clues or like a random example. Uh, tricarbolic acid, which is number nine on the oat test, actually has an affinity for minerals or like oxalic acid. Number 21 is an anti-nutrient that binds a lot of minerals and kind of kind of steals your minerals. So there's definitely a lot of uh, consideration, but you don't get any direct reflection of mineral status on the oat. But I do think oat and HTMA and blood work go extremely well together uh, to reveal more of that because, you know, you could do that HTMA and you start your remineralization protocol but if you're totally oblivious to some of these different uh, fungal metabolites or the oxalic acid or some of these toxins that are stealing your minerals, you know, you're really kind of fighting an uphill battle and, you know, you need to address the microbes and the toxins before you're going to be able to effectively remineralize the body. True. True. So it's kind of the answer is you just have to do all of FDN, really. It's really what it comes down. I think right. that's why I feel like that me using HTMA for the past few years here has worked so well. And I've had such good results on retesting and seeing people improve and change is because it's not just only an HTMA that I'm doing. I'm doing everything collectively. So it's just another piece of that puzzle that I, I feel like is very helpful. And um, so that's that's why FTN works so well for you know, at least I'm going to say at least 85 percent of people that you work with. That's that's the stat I always put out there. 85 percent of people that I work with, we can get them where they want to get to within about six months, and then to carry that on forward, that 15 percent there, that's when you need a little more advanced, a little more time. Um, something else that's going on, you have to dig a little bit deeper into things that aren't so obvious um, there. I've got kind of a list in my head that I that I go through. So um, yeah, collectively. It works really well, but Brenda's making a good point there. Everything's all interconnected, and you could have still some impedances to things working well. Again, you know, why is it's kind of like minerals maybe like hormones, right? So hormones, why is the DHEA low? Why is testosterone low? I'll just give some recommend some DHEA over the counter. That might raise levels possibly, um, but as soon as you take that away, you're back where you started. So it's digging deeper and trying to find those um, functional root causes. So very good. Yes. I, awesome. I really appreciate it. And the reason I asked is because a friend of mine, she is not already, you know, I'm not working yet with her because I'm not finished yet with the program, but she was asking specifically how much of the calcium supplements to take. And sometimes, you know, we, oh. we don't know with people how long they are using these supplements. And I, you know, and having too much calcium, it's a it can overload the system as well. So that's fine balance. So that's why I wanted to figure out. But obviously, the HDMA would be the greatest way to do it. I really appreciate your that's feedback. Right, sure. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Randy. Thank you. Yeah, that's where I would start, definitely. So that's uh, probably uh, copper, calcium, zinc, maybe three ones that I'm hesitant to recommend without having an HDMA in front of me. Those are my three ones. And those are a lot of multivitamins that people take. So that could be pushing the body in, in the wrong direction. Uh, for sure. So yeah, get that data. And then real quick point, we have six minutes left. I want to grab this other caller here. Hopefully we can answer your question here. Um, yes, uh, go through the process of doing lab work on yourself and working out all the kinks, especially something like a blood draw that really you don't have as much control over. They're not doing true self-testing at home. Um, wherever you're sending people, make sure that's an easy process. Um, where I live, in the community I live, it's a super easy process. Um, and it is lots of different places. You can also check Oxford's website there. They tell you places they have agreements with. Um, that makes things a little bit smoother, but still good to do the legwork exactly, make things easy as possible with the sampling, uh, uh, sample collection. That's another big principle there. Make it easy as much as you can on your clients. So, Okay, well, I've got last, one last caller here with a hand raised, five minutes left. Area code 248. Hello, 248. What's your name? Hi, this is Mary Kay from Michigan. Hey, Mary Kay. I want to know you, Mary Kay. Hi. Hello again. Hi. How are you? Doing good. Very well. How are from you? Michigan today. Good. Michigan's yes. representative. Um, 
I have a question regarding um, the full thyroid panel. I think um, Brendan was talking about it Wednesday night on a call, saying that the spectra cell would not be on the um, the MDP on the test site on the um, the site, the FDN Connect site. So I'm looking on the site trying to find the DHA. He said, um, and wondering if um, if that's what we should offer. It's a, it's a patient that has been unable to get a uh, full saliva and thyroid panel through her doctor. So she's asking me if um, you know if there's something that we can do. Yeah, um, absolutely. So first and foremost, do you have you already set up your FDN account with DHA Labs? If we had to do that through the training that I did, I haven't used them yet. Um, I'm just fairly new, so um, sure. I have not ordered any testing through that, but I will check that out. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that's new, uh, well, new within the past year or something. So um, I developed a pretty good relationship with DHA, so then um, I kind of brought it to Reed, and we developed a good partnership with them. So now uh, they're so good about uh, all their different blood testing options, all sorts of blood chemistry um, we have some kind of custom, uh, custom panels we put together uh, to offer for, you know, men's general wellness panel or blood sugar panel or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Either way, you pr- would not have been prompted to set up an account with them through your training. So that would okay. be kind of another another account. Um, I don't know the exact process because it's been a while since I've done it. But, I mean, honestly, if you just reached out to DHA Labs directly and was like, hi, I'm an FDN wanting to set up my account, they'll, you know, <laughs> okay. they'll uh, take care of you. My friend Dan is the head dude, and they have awesome customer service. And then, yeah, once you have your account set up, it's super easy. You just have your kind of test menu requisition form and you just fill it out for each, you know, each client, what markers do you want? What panels do you want? Send it in. Um, and since it's just blood work, there's no test kit or anything. So it kind of takes out okay. some of the the hassle with that, where once they've received the requisition form and build you accordingly, um, your client will get the, um, the requisition form via email, and then all they have to do is print it off and take it with them to the nearest LabCorp blood draw site, and they do provide a blood draw locator link. So I always, you know, just punch in my client's zip code to make sure that there's a blood draw site near them before I Mm -hmm. order the panel. And then, of course, I just let them know, like, hey, there's a blood draw site right up the street from you. Just walk in, get your blood drawn. So it's all super easy. Okay. And um, as far as um, for me as a practitioner and learning about it, is there a, co- a cost like the $75 cost? Fee, and do you, do you get to meet with someone and talk about it or? Mm, um, good question. No. So since it's directly with DHA um, with the ordering, there's no $75 ordering fee, which also means there's okay. no a uh, complimentary medical director console with it, but okay. um, which it, we don't really mention it super often, but the whole community should know this. And I'll say it where um, you can always buy a medical director console for, I think it's like $50, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Brandon. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I think 65 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. So that's yes. the thing. I mean, yeah, obviously the majority of tests you're going to order through the medical director program, but for, things like the Dutch test or the DHA blood work, um, you can always just, you know, buy a medical director consult. And uh, I'm a big blood chemistry guy myself, so I'm always happy to help. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That'll get me started. Um, But I appreciate you guys being there, and I learned a lot today just listening. That was great. Oh, wonderful. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. All right. Cool. But. 30 seconds left in the show. So, yeah, Brendan, I'll publicly thank you for connecting with the DHA lab because it makes it super easy oh, thanks, and affordable to, to the testing. I've set my account up, used them uh, often, and, yeah, it's great customer service, easy process, just with the outline there. So, yeah, guys, uh, reach out to, I think, Danny Marino. Is that Dan? So reach out to Dan mm-hmm. and uh, get that set up there. Have that as an option if you want to go down that direction with that. And uh, it's good stuff. So, well, hey. Time's out for today, so 
guys, thank you for all the callers. Great questions there. Hopefully that was helpful to you guys. And congratulations to our graduates this week, all three of them, Tiffany, um, Claude, and Taraya. And we'll be back next week, and we'll answer some more questions, help you guys out. Um, You guys have an awesome weekend. Brendan, thanks for being on with me, man. Talk to you guys soon. Always, my friend. See you guys. 